right now. Celebrate the season with Dana Tyler. Merry Christmas and welcome to Celebrate the Season. I'm Dana Tyler. We thank you for spending part of your holiday with us. For all of 2020's many challenges, we can still find a bright spot this time of year. There's that feeling in the air and the iconic lights and decorations. Yes, for sure, we're celebrating differently, maybe even with more appreciation for the true meaning of the season. A mark of this holiday is a Christmas tree, whether it's outside to light up a landmark or bringing cheer to a home indoors. Selling Christmas trees is a joy too, says one man, but he also tells us so is his other job. CBS 2's Kieran Dillon has his story. Merry Christmas! This is Greg Walsh. He's known to some as the tree man. And I know every single tree in this lot every single one i know its whole life when he's not taking care of business or playing santa's elf at one of his five christmas tree locations where else can you do this and see the little kids faces light up he's a special ed teacher i i i've loved teaching the whole school day is here even more challenging in these times he's doing it remotely i'm good at bringing kids out of their shells that's what i'm good at and it's it's, I'm getting goosebumps. But now, tis the season, as they say. So when the school day is done, Greg turns his attention to his trees. For more than three decades, this has been his seasonal business and his passion. Like everything else this year, there was uncertainty about it, even as his home transformed into a tree man's workshop and was loaded with inventory. The question, would there or could there be any business? People are so happy we're here. I've been doing this for 35 years. Never have people been so excited when they got their tree. I'm certain of that. A jolly relief. And for Greg, another part of the season of giving is that it's his season of giving, of giving away treats. He says it's an important part of spreading holiday cheer. We donate to different groups. We, we here in Papua New Zealand, we also cover the people we give trees to. There's a couple of churches that we give trees to. And it's been almost two decades that he's been donating trees. For us to have a tree lighting at the beginning of December at the Poppenhusen Monument Park. Susan Brussman is the executive director of the Poppenhusen Institute in College Point, Queens, a cultural center that offers free and low-cost programs to the community. This year, she says, the trees and decorations that Greg is donating are even more meaningful. It's very rough, so any dollar we have to spend is difficult, so having the tree donated this year is more important than ever. The same is true for the Union Settlement in East Harlem. Greg donated 10 trees there for families in need. And this one's also one of his, lighting up the corner of 106th and 3rd. It was a good holiday season for Greg's trees this year, hopefully a sign of things to come. But no matter what, he says some traditions will always remain the same. I believe in community. I believe in helping out somebody who's struggling. Um, I'm glad to help them. And sometimes I'll get a call from a manager. Hey, we got a guy here. He's only got $50. Can we give him a $100 tree? Because I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? Like. So what? We don't make money on that tree. I'd much rather that than tell somebody they can't have a tree. Many businesses are banking on the holidays to help rebound after this extremely difficult year. And for two small business owners, this is also a time to reflect and give thanks to their employees and their customers who kept them going. CBS 2's Andrea Klein-Thomas has their story. At Palmer Sweetery and Cafe in Maplewood, New Jersey. The holiday season really has us, you know, amazed at the fact that we're still here. Um, amazed at the fact that our community is rallying around us the way they are. Gratitude is the extra ingredient that keeps customers coming back. Here you go. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a happy holiday. While the holidays this year are unlike any other. The one thing that hasn't changed is the food. Um, it can still bring a little bit of joy. It just might not be with the large group of people that we're used to. A constant we're all craving after such a difficult year, Palmer included. In the spring, the bakery went from being open six days a week to one while reducing her staff to just Palmer, her best friend and her mother who's the co-owner. She is integral uh, to our bakery. The staff returned by June, adding extra days as business picked up and stepping up social media to drum up new customers for an even bigger cause. We uh, donated proceeds from our sales to different initiatives, whether it was for voting, for human rights, for LGBTQ. We um, joined the Bakers Against Racism. We collect on um, every Sunday for the local food pantries. So we're trying to do everything that we can to give back because we've been so blessed. Blessings.
still come with moments of uncertainty. I actually had a few days where I thought maybe I was crazy for trying to remain open. Just ask Dawn Kelly, owner of the Nourish Spot in Jamaica, Queens. From the beginning of the pandemic, Kelly turned to social media to take her customers on the journey with her, both the ups and the downs. I'm here, I'm ready to serve you. This is the COVID-19 challenges. She did not have to lay off employees, many of whom are college students, who have agreed to quarantine during their time off to keep the business going. My faith kept me in this. I prayed and prayed and prayed and then look and prayed some more. Those prayers have been answered in the form of grants, including one from Beyonce's nonprofit, which has taken some pressure off during the holidays. We try to close for like a week of Christmas that leads to New Year. Giving the name the Nourish Spot even deeper meaning. Some days I go in my house and I actually dissolve in a puddle of tears. One, because I'm a little tired. The tuna wrap. Y'all working on the tuna wrap? Two, because I just can't believe that God has blessed us like this. Like, it's amazing that we're still open. Coming up, when it comes to presents, it's no surprise that some of Santa's helpers can be found right here in New York City, bringing a special gift of gifts to parents and children in need. We'll be right back. There are so many great live performances we've missed this year. Here's the iconic New York Philharmonic with a special holiday presentation. <laughs> 